stacks of wax volume 15 we're going at it again that's right the the 15th 15th one of these bad boys yippee for those of you who don't know this is the show where i go through my record collection show it off alphabetically a through z top to bottom and last episode episode 14 we had actually started once again with the a's finally doing a full completion a full rotation around the alphabetical sun and here we are again with some of the B's. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you need me to explain it again, I won't. You can go back and watch another video and maybe that will explain it for you. We're gonna get right into things here because I don't really feel like wasting too much time today. Um, and that would be with a record that totally could have made it onto the last episode, but had not arrived in time. That would be Basement. It's their 10 year anniversary of Color Me In Kindness. As you can see, this is not even opened yet. Um, this got in um, not too long ago, as I just said. I've yet to open it. So I figured I would do my first ever unboxing on this show. I've never done that before, I don't think. I don't recall. So let's get right into opening this bad boy up because I am curious. It's supposed to be, what is it called? The yellow with the red vinyl spot. I think that's what it said. I stopped reading a little too early. Get the old plastic wrap off. Save the hype sticker. Might need that. All right. <clears throat> so this slides right on out. Nice little cover there. I don't know if you can tell, but the lettering is on there. It's just hard to see. Yeah, actually, I didn't notice it when I first picked it up, and <laughs> I only noticed it when I was cutting it apart now. So here it is, the Gatefold album. Nice, very nice. Very nice, can't complain. Uh, yeah, this is Run For Cover who put this 10 year anniversary out. So far, so good, man. I, I like the uh, the packaging, it's well done. Let's see, ooh, ooh. Holy shit, that is something else. That, um, hmm. It looks up. It looks like when I uh, puke the flaming hot Cheetos. It's kind of rad, uh, in in its own weird and unique way. This is a great record. If you haven't heard it already, I haven't listened to it in a couple years now. If I'm being honest, but when I saw this pop up, I was like, you know what? What the hell? I'll buy it. If I don't get too much use out of it, I do think that getting a limited pressing like this will be worth something in a little bit of time. Hopefully, if not, then I just threw away my money, and you know. It is what it is. Cool. So yeah, that is Basement's Color Me in Kindness, the 10 year anniversary pressing. Uh, there are other variants available. That was the lowest amount like available that I saw. So I figured I might as well just try to get the most rare or whatever the hell it'd be. Next up is actually another record that I've yet to open, but I'm going to do that not in an unboxing manner because We'll be here all night if I do that. Boy, oh boy, do I need a better knife. That, that knife really sucks. The blade's bad. Anyway, this is Big Thief's Capacity. Um, <clears throat> this is the Newberry Comics Recycled Dark Purple Color Vinyl Limited Edition of 750. This record's great. I'm not a huge, huge Big Thief fan. Um, I think that they put out some solid material. Um, and this was the record in particular that got me interested in them. See, so yeah, I'm glad to finally have this on vinyl. Holy crap, this needs to get cleaned up. Um, it's nice, really, really dark purple. That, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, this, uh, I really do like this record. I like their new one that they just put out this year. I thought it was really solid. I just can't stand double LPs that are like an hour and 20 minutes long. Come on, I got a life to live and I can't be wasting it all on your music. I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah. This record's good, really good. Shark Smile was like one of the anthems of my freshman year of college for certain. That song was on repeat. Um, yeah, Big Thief, man. Go listen to them if you never have before, and if you haven't, you're uh, you're missing out. Sorry if I don't sound right. Um, kind of lost my voice not too long ago, and it's finally starting to come back, but I'm also not feeling 100% because it's fall. That's just, that is what it is. It's the, it's the, it's the best, uh, best season that also makes me sick. So, you know, you live and learn. Next up here, we have two records from the infamous Bikini Kill. Uh, we have Pussy Whipped right here, and then we have the Singles Collection. Both these are really solid, solid collection of tunes, uh, specifically Pussy Whipped, fantastic album if you've never heard it. So are all of their studio albums, but 
Um, personally, I like Pussy Whip the best. Yeah, these are just all on black vinyl. These just all standard reissues from like the past two or three years ago whenever they came out. Um, if you are looking to get into more Bikini Kill though, I do recommend checking out my video that I made on them uh, for so you're interested in. Pussy Whipped is absolutely talked about there. Um, let's see if I remember exactly what songs I talked about. I believe I talked about, well, I could sit here all day. I don't remember the exact three songs that I mentioned, but I don't want to be uh, an idiot and get one of them wrong. Obviously, Rebel Girl was on that. I'm, I'm, I'm no moron there. I knew what I was doing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Same thing with the singles. Uh, Fantastic Collection, New Radio, uh, Anti-Pleasure disser Dissertation. Um, I don't know. I like fucking, I just, th this, Bikini Kill's awesome, man. If you don't know them, uh, you're missing out for certain. Um, just one of the best punk rockers to ever do it. Um, yeah, and they still kick ass. Um, just maybe not in terms of making music, but they just, uh, they're consistently based and they deserve all the credit in the world for being as based as possible all the time. Now, here's an interesting one um, that we have never really even tried to cover on this channel yet. And that would actually be a comedy album. This is the Billy Wayne Davis Live at Third Man Records record album, whatever you want to call it. This was a live show that Billy Wayne Davis, a comedian, did, obviously at Third Man Records. It's that self-explanatory. I found this guy um, through a podcast I listened to. Um, you might have listened to it too, Behind the Bastards. He was a guest on there. Thought he was pretty damn funny. Was going through somebody's Discogs page one day and saw that this existed, and I literally had no idea that there was a live comedy album at Third Man Records. And I figured, what the hell, I'll pick it up. It was pretty cheap. Uh, this guy's funny as hell, so I figured no matter what, I'll at least get a laugh out of it. And I did. This was a uh, pretty solid comedy album. It actually makes me want to get a couple more comedy albums, if I'm being honest with you. Nothing, uh, nothing groundbreaking by any means, but boy, he certainly does have a couple really good bits in here um, that I do recommend checking out. He, he is something else. Who'd, uh, who'd have thunk that we'd have a uh, comedy album on this episode? Hopefully, we'll have more comedy albums uh, spread throughout my collection in the near future. That would be pretty rad. Next up, we have two more classic punk records here. Uh, that would be Black Flag's My War, along with the last show in Detroit on June 27th, 1986. This one, a boot, pretty obviously a boot. Uh, this was a reissue. What year was this reissued? I don't remember and it's not gonna say it right there for me So I'm gonna guess I don't know. I think it's like 2015 reissue. Oh, no, I love black flag uh, I'm sure you guys have picked up on that um, So I don't have my black flag tattoo yet, but we're working on that my warp uh, absolutely my favorite black flag album no no second guesses at all. I mean, just what a fantastic record, revolutionary record, influenced so many other bands and styles of music as well. I mean, uh, My War is one of the best punk songs of all time. I don't care. Uh, Can't Decide, I Love You, Forever Time, The Swinging Man, one of the best last songs on an A-side, The Swinging Man. Oh, it's just fucking awesome. Nothing Left Inside, uh, Three Nights, uh, just this whole thing, this whole record. If you have never listened to it before, please do yourself a favor and go listen to it. It might not be exactly your thing, and if you're more into like the TV party style of Black Flag or I don't know, Gimme 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 or something like that, maybe this isn't exactly for you, but um, if you're more into like stoner metal and stuff like that and seeing exactly where like 90s uh, metal went and grunge almost took a turn and punk took a turn, I think so much of that can be directly brought back to this record because it kicks ass so much and I love it. And then, like I said, this is just a boot of the last show in Detroit. Um, I found this at Main Street Music in Maniunk in Philadelphia. Um, decided to pick it up because I've always wanted to own at least one Black, La Black Flag live show. I love the, was it the Live 84 or whatever it's called? Um, I think it's like the one on Spotify. Uh, I love that record. I listen to it actually all the time. It's one, definitely one of my most played live albums. Wish I could get that one on vinyl, even if it just is a boot, but I haven't seen it really available. So found this, not a bad price, decided to pick it up. I've yet to play it, if I'm being honest here. Maybe I'll do that after we're done uh, recording this. But the, the track, list, track list seems pretty good. The vinyl's in good condition, just black. 
But yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll have to give this a spin once I'm done filming this bad boy right here. That is my Black Flag collection so far. I also have everything went black, but we uh we covered that last time when I covered Black Flag like two or three years ago. So no need to go back on that. Next one up here. This is a blank mess. This is animated violence, mild um, electronic music. Um, I don't know. This guy's cool. Found this record for cheap on Discogs when I was already buying something from uh, another seller, and I had actually already had this on my want list. Uh, probably my favorite record of his. Uh, yeah, probably my favorite record of his. He does have some great material, though, don't get me wrong. Don't be surprised if you see a so you're interested in on Blank Mass in the somewhat near future. I have been working on that. Um, yeah, <clears throat> cool record, good color. I mean, look at that. Just the art on this thing is pretty cool. Let me... Let me really show that off because I feel like I've been doing a bad job of that in this episode. Back cover there, front cover. I got the inner sleeve here. Look at that. It's disgusting. It's sick. That's cool as hell. But yeah, it comes on that awesome green that you just saw. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I do love electronic music and I do keep saying that I want to buy, buy more and get it in my collection. I've said it plenty of videos up till this point uh so yeah i was very happy to pick this one up it's solid uh i do like a lot of the tracks on here and i would like to buy more blank mess in the future but i'm currently trying to deep dive into his discography right now and trying to write a video so we'll see how that goes maybe by the time that video comes up I'll have more blank mass in my collection. This is another kind of weird one that also just came in from the good people at Death Bomb Arc. This is Blectum from the Bleakthem, uh, Deep Bone. Uh, I've not heard this record since it first came out, and I'm not gonna lie, I was like pretty stoned, I think, when it first came out listening to it. It's weird as hell, man. Like, just an incredibly experimental record that sounds great, if I recall correctly. But uh, Death Bomb Mark put this on sale along with a bunch of the other stuff in their uh, uh, catalog for sale. And it was like way too good of an offer to pass up, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I mean, they were like giving it away. So I said, screw it, I will buy it so I can listen to it again and enjoy it all over again for its weird, uh, manic, strange approach to music creation. I don't know. Um, it's experimental as hell and I love them for it. And yeah, this is the uh, this is the color. I don't know if you can really see here, but it is an orange in the red. Can't really tell, at least from what I'm looking at here. But it is pretty badass. I mean, I really like that. I, I didn't know. I saw when I logged it on Discogs that it was supposed to have orange on it, and I didn't believe it until I like just really looked at it right now. Now talk about a jarring switch between genres here from whatever the hell that is, to, uh, to Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Revisited. Um, I picked this up pretty recently at a local record shop. They had like their, you know, buy two used records, get the third free. And, you know, they, they had a couple good ones that just I've never owned and I should own. And, you know, they're not in the best condition by any means. <laughs> they're in pretty rough condition. But I did play them all and they sound fine. This was one of them that I did indeed pick up. Um, I forget exactly which pressing this is, but you know what? We're gonna find that out really quickly because I am curious. Pull up Discogs here. What do you mean I don't have internet I'm in my own house? All right, so apparently this is the 1970 reissue of this record. I thought it was gonna give you more info, but I guess it's not. Anywho. Um, classic. I, I don't know what else you want me to say at this point. I recommend it fully. Of course, here's my dumb friends texting me in my group chat. I should have never opened up my laptop. That's my own fault. Put in a new inner sleeve here. Um, clean the record up. It sounds fine. Sounds actually pretty good for uh, its age and from how it looks like it was really taken care of, at least when you look at the the roughness of this cover itself. Let me ask you guys, though, I am curious now. How many of you go to these, you know, like when a record store has those, like, really used bins, like where you find uh, 800 of the same Bing Crosby, like, Christmas album or something like that? How many of you really do dig through them 
to get something like this, even if it's not in the best condition, but it's for like a cheap price and it's something you feel like you almost have to own because of how impactful and important this record is. And maybe, I don't know, maybe throughout time you decide that you don't want it anymore and you want to get rid of it or something along those lines, but you feel like at some point you feel like you have to own it. Like, do you guys buy it? I mean, hopefully you don't buy it from Amazon, but do you buy it from like a, a local real retailer or somebody, even like if it's a Target or something like that, when it is like a, a 2022 reissue or something along those lines? Or do you try to go back and find these uh, uh, well loved? And uh, my camera died midway through that sentence. But anyway, I think you got the gist of what I was saying. I hope so. Um, if not editing, this is gonna look pretty dumb. So yeah, Hi Highway 61 revisited Bob Dylan. Uh, but marinate all my question. I kind of want to know what you have to say about that. This is, oh yeah, here we go, baby. This is Body Meat. This is Year of the Orc. This is a record that came out this year or last year. I can't remember. Um, this dude is either Philadelphia based or Camden based electronic artist. He has put out some really solid stuff um, over the past couple of years. I know I've mentioned him on one of my year end videos. I believe it was like 2019. Um, yeah, picked it up during a Bandcamp Friday because I really like the guy and I want to support him. It's a solid uh, electronic, like I said, record. Uh, nothing too crazy about it, but it was cool to finally own some of his music on wax because I do believe that this was his first ever record to be pressed, which is rad. I, I, I'm glad to see it. I think he will blow up soon, I hope. I really do. I seem like he's been gaining some traction and I hope that that can continue. Seems like a good dude. Make some pretty solid music, and I'm always going to support one of my locals. You know that's true. Continuing on, barreling through here, it is Boris. It's the live at Third Man Records uh, recording. Uh, this is the only Boris record that I own right now, which just sucks. I, I want to own more. I love Boris. Boris is awesome. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just the, the live at Third Man's. You know, you've seen a ton of them on this channel by now. Standard Black Pressing, um, good live album, you know. And they put out good stuff and it's consistent and I really just feel like I don't need to spend too much time harping on it, you know? But yeah, Boris, if anyone wants to send me Pink or actually any of their other records for free, I will, uh, <laughs> I will take it. I will not complain about that. It is Botch, We Are The Romans. Finally, got a nice new reissue this year, and this finally just came in. Been waiting for this one for a minute now. Very exciting. I love this album. Oh, yeah, check that out. That's some good shit right there. That is some good shit, Sergeant House. Y'all killed it. Yeah, uh, Botch, um, obviously legendary hardcore band. Um, apparently, they're kind of back from what I hear. I don't know. This reissue has the new song that they just released this year on it. Was it 22 1 or 122 or whatever the song's called? Uh, it kicks ass. It's awesome. Uh, this also just got in like a day or. I, I've been on uh, a trip for the past couple of days. I've been around and this came in. I'm very excited to spin this. I love this album. Um, I've been waiting for a reissue for. Uh, quite some time now so i don't have to spend the exorbitant amount of money on the other reaches that are out there so this was a this was a pleasant surprise when i saw this was uh, getting reissued very very happy to have this uh this edition of what is it is the black blue edition i think it's uh, it was the more limited edition i, I hopped as soon as i saw uh the sergeant house put out the tweet immediately Bye. I'm running out of time here. My uh, my camera's gonna die on me again. So let's uh, let's close this video out with one last record, and that would be from a band that I love and cherish very much. The boy harsher here. Uh, this is Careful, a fantastic, fantastic synth pop, dark wave. Uh, dance Punk LP. These guys are awesome. Um, I need to buy more of their material. I've been actually meaning to do that for a little while now. These guys just kick ass. I bought this a couple years back. Um, I think from their band camp, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, there it is. That's it. That is a, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous record. Just truly gorgeous album. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, this is a great record. If you've never heard of it before, you uh, are missing out. I know I say that a lot, but especially, especially on this one. 
Um, just really great 80s vibes, really carried throughout. The songwriting is on point. Uh, just everything, the mixing, the production, just these guys know how to put together a awesome album. Um, and they have done it repeatedly over the past couple of years, and I'm excited to see whatever they put out next. I know they just did the soundtrack for, what was it called, The Runner, or something like that. A couple of really good songs on there. I'm uh, It's been on my want list for a little bit here, and I might pull that trigger soon. But until then, this is the only Boy Harsha that I have. Um, and we'll work on that in the future. But anyway, that's it. That's all that I got. I got like a minute left here before my camera dies. So I'm going to make this really quick. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. These come out like every month at this point. It's pretty much what my scheduling looks like. You can also subscribe for videos like, uh, sorry. You can also subscribe for videos like So You're Interested In, a show where I break down an artist's discography in order to give you, the viewer, the best possible jumping off point in order to get into the catalog. I've done it on a bunch of artists that I've talked about in this episode of Stacks of Wax. I know I did one on Boy Harsher, Bikini Kill, Black Flag is one of my oldest videos that I have on the channel. Um, yeah, just some really good stuff if you are uh, looking to expand your mind uh, on what type of music is really out there, you know? So yeah, thank you. Be sure to leave a comment below if you had any of these records. Maybe you have like a different pressing of Highway 61 Revisited or your variant for Boy Harsher's Careful is different and you think it's cooler. Let me know. I think that'd be cool. I love uh, discussing with you guys what you have in your collection, what you want from in your collection. Maybe you want to buy one of these off me. Maybe I'm open to it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Be sure to go out and support your local record store along with the local artists in your area. And, well, until I see you next time, happy listening.